Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to walk you through hierarchical multiple regression in R. And before we get started, let me note that you can obtain a copy of the data file at this link right here. Uh, the data is saved in an R data file, and uh, within that, it's saved within the uh, data frame named Reg Data. So I'm going to make a link um, underneath the video description uh, so that you can download the data. And I'm also going to include a link under the video description so that you can download a copy of this text file that we're going to be working through. So basically, I've already imported the data uh, into R. And so what I'm going to start off with is just running a basic multiple regression model where we're going to simultaneously enter the predictors. So you'll notice uh, in this little section right here, uh, what I'm going to be doing is saving a regression analysis to an object that I'm calling model SE with uh, capital S and E. Then we have our, uh, our arrow, which is essentially just a less than sign followed by a hyphen. Then we're using the LM functions for linear model. Uh, within the parenthesis, we have achieved. That's the name of the dependent variable followed by a tilde and then the names of the independent variables to the right separated by plus sign. So we have mastery, interest, gender ID, and performance goals. Um, and just make sure that the names fit what's in the data frame. Uh, the, also, I'm, I have my uh, data argument, so it's data set equal to reg data. That's the name of the data frame. So we're going to run the analysis, and then we're going to use our summary function just to take a quick look at our output. So what I'm going to do is actually just copy all of this and paste it into R. Uh, to avoid mistakes and to kind of expedite things. So you can see uh, this is what we have uh, typed in right here uh, to run the model Then we're using our summary function here. So down below you can see that the multiple R square is uh, 0.411. Uh, we have the adjusted R square that's given right here 0.3937. The F statistic that's given right here and you can see the P value we would uh, indicate that that's less than 0 0.001. We can see that for the mastery predictor variable, uh, there's a positive predictive relationship and statistically significant. Basically, students scoring higher on mastery goals uh, were predicted to score higher in terms of math achievement. We have this interest variable right here that's also positive and significant uh, predictor. Uh, the gender ID variable, um, you can see that it's not statistically significant. And then performance goals uh, given right here, you can see there's a negative uh, predictive relationship and that is statistically significant. So we're not going to spend a lot of time unpacking all the results. The main point of this uh, demonstration is to walk you through the how-to's. So what we're going to do now is run a hierarchical regression where we're going to be adding in predictors over a set of models. So the first model that we're going to run, we're going to call it model 1 and we're going to use the LM function and we're going to just essentially in this case we're going to be testing a simple regression model. So in this case, we have gender ID serving as a predictor of achievement. The next model, model two, we are going to add in the interest variable. So now what we're going to have are two predictors. We're going to have gender ID and interest serving as predictors. Then for model three, we're going to have uh, gender ID, interest, mastery goals, and performance goals. So you can see uh, between model one and model two, we're adding in a single predictor. Between model two and model three, we're adding in uh, two, uh, um, uh, basically two additional predictors, those being mastery goals and performance goals. So let's uh, go ahead and run these analyses. So I'm actually, again, I'm just going to copy this and paste it from my, uh, uh, copy it from my text file and paste it in to R and run the analysis. So the analyses have been run, and I didn't really describe it in the um, in the text file. But if you want to look at each of the models, we can just use the summary function. And we can say summary model one. And there it is. So that's just a simple regression just with gender identification uh, included as a predictor. I can say summary model two. And there you go. We've got now gender identification and interest as predictors. And then obviously summary model three. And you can see that now we have all of our predictors that are included in it. Now, to obtain the R square values, uh, or excuse me, to obtain the R square change uh, from model one to model two, uh, obviously we could just go back through what we just did and look at the R square values, and we can compute all of these by hand. But if we don't want to do that, um, 
then what we could do is essentially uh, create a, an object and essentially call out uh, the R square values from say model one and model two and then just compute the difference between them. So you can see right here that I've, I'm creating an object called RSQ dot delta one um, and then I have my arrow and then I've got summary model two followed by a dollar sign and then R squared. So basically what's happening is we're calling out the R squared value that's contained in the model two object that we've just looked at. Uh, then we have a minus sign right here and then summary then inside parenthesis model one and then uh, the dollar sign and then R squared. So we're going to call out the R squared value from model one. And so basically this entire uh, piece right here, we're just essentially computing the difference in R squared values. And then if I want to look at the R squared value, I'm just going to type in R uh, SQ dot delta one, which is the name of the object that's given right here. To test the change in R squared, uh, then I can use the ANOVA function. So I'm just going to type in ANOVA uh, and then inside parenthesis, I've got model one, comma, model two, comma, and then test equals, and inside quotation marks, I've got a capital F, then follow it with a uh, parenthesis. So you can see right here, I'm just going to copy this and paste it all in, again, just to kind of expedite things. So you can see that we've computed the change in R squared from model one to model two. Like I said, we could. Uh, compute the change in R squared uh, pretty easily uh, just with a calculator if we just go into each of our model summaries and get the R squared values that are given for model one and model two and then compute the difference but if you don't want to do that and you just want to do this uh, really quickly then you can just do what I've just done uh, so there's the uh, change in R squared from model one to model two and then within the ANOVA sum the ANOVA table down here you've got a description you've got model one achieve as a function of gender ID and then model two we've got achieve being predicted by gender ID and interest so down here is the test of the change in R square and so you can see right here we've got the degrees of freedom uh, 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 do the effect and then we've got the degrees of freedom residual right there we've got our FA that's given right there and then our p-value so you can see that the change in R square um, is statistically significant and obviously we can do the same thing when we're looking at our change R square change from model two to model three. So here's the in this case I'm creating a R square uh, delta variable or uh, basically reflecting the change in R square from model two to model three where we're adding in uh, those uh, mastering performance goals variables. So now you can see I'm calling out the R square value from uh, the summary of model three or the fit object uh, from model three and then also doing the same thing from model two right there and then computing the difference between those R square values. So I'm going to uh, use this uh, right here RSQ dot uh, delta two uh, to uh, actually get the R square change value and then to test the R square change we're going to use our ANOVA function again and I've got model two comma model three again test equals uh, F capital F in quotation marks so we'll go ahead and just copy this and paste it in and so now you can see the change in R square from model 2 to model 3 is 0.1195 uh, and it, uh, if we're interested in testing whether that's significant we can come down here and you can see that uh, we have our p-value that's given right there and you can see that we have a significant change in R square from model 2 to model 3. So basically adding in the mastery and performance goals variables um, yielded a significant increase in explanatory power. Now let's say that we wanted to operate in reverse. Let's say we wanted to start off with the full model containing all of our predictors and then delete uh, uh, predictors um, over a set of models. So you can see right here I've got a full model. This is uh, essentially all of the predictors that are included. This is essentially that simultaneous entry um, uh, model that we started off with where all of the predictors were entered at the same time. And then in this case right here we're going to uh, remove gender identification. And uh, just so you know, uh, the little pound sign right here, this is just a comment uh, line. So anything following that pound sign is going to be a comment. So um, you can see that for model two, uh, we have all of our predictors uh, except for gender identification. So, uh, so there you go. There's that removal of, of that variable. And then we're going to uh, run a model three where we are going to remove 
uh, our uh, performance variable, our performance goals variable. So now we're just going to be left with interest and mastery goals as predictors. So let's go ahead and run all of these. Okay, so all of them have been run. Again, if I want to uh, obtain summary uh, output from Model 1, there it is. Summary for Model 2, there it is. And that's without the gender identification variable. And then summary for Model 3, uh, you can see that now we just have interest and mastery goals as predictors within that model. And again, you can see that pretty much uh, the same process that we uh, laid out above when it came to computing the R-square uh, change and uh, testing the significance of the change in R-square, uh, we can follow. So you can see right here uh, that we've got uh, RSQ.delta1. And again, I'm calling out the R-square value associated with the Model 1 fit object uh, and then subtracting the R-square value being called out of the Model 2 fit object. So we can, uh, and then right here, we can just, now we can print it out and see it. Then we have our test of change in R square, again using the ANOVA function. Uh, we have model one comma model two right here. Test is equal to uh, F in quotation marks. Uh, you can see down here, I'm uh, basically uh, looking at uh, the difference in R square between model two and model three. And so you can see uh, here, we've got our ANOVA function followed by model two comma model three and then our F test. So let's go ahead and just run all of this as a batch. And there you go. So now you can see, as we kind of scroll up right here, that we have right here our R-square uh, change from Model 1 to Model 2. Again, this is our uh, commands uh, to obtain that R-square change. You can see that the R-square change is 0 .00679. So very minimal change as a result of removing the gender ID variable. So if we look at the analysis of variance table, you can see that uh, here we've got all of our predictors. That's model one. And then model two, you can see uh, we've removed the gender ID variable. So our test for the difference uh, but, um, in R square values between the two models um, is uh, yields a p-value of 0.2142. So the fact that um, removing the gender ID variable did not re result in a significant um, reduction in explanatory power basically indicates that the gender ID variable was not a, a substantial or significant uh, contributor to our uh, full model. Then we can see down here that uh, we have our uh, computation of the change in R-square from model 2 to model 3. So you can see the change in R-square is 0.0197 and you can see here that it is statistically significant. So remember that you know basically we had model one where we had uh, interest, mastery, and performance goals as predictors, and then model two we're removing performance goals. So you can see that by removing performance goals we had a significant reduction in explained variance. So that actually is an indication that performance goals uh, um, is a viable uh, predictor for our model. Okay, so that pretty well concludes this demonstration. Once again, let me just reiterate that you can obtain a copy of the data file right here. Um, and if you want to obtain a copy of the text file, you can also find that uh, in addition to this link right here underneath the video description. So thanks for watching.